Picture this, it's Monday morning. You roll out of bed, grab a cup of coffee, and you're ready to face the workday with a smile. Now, that's not a scene from a utopian fantasy, but a reality we can create. Yes, we're talking about employee well-being, and it's no longer a nice-to-have, but a must-have in our business strategies. Sounds far-fetched? Well, hold on to your swivel chairs because we're about to dive deep into the world of well-being at work. And we aren't just talking about that occasional team-building exercise or those weekly yoga sessions. No. We're talking about a holistic approach that creates a genuinely healthy, supportive, and engaging work environment. Well-being is not just about having a pool table in the break room or free fruit in the cafeteria, although apples are always nice. It's about ensuring that our people are physically fit, mentally strong, and emotionally healthy. It's about creating an environment where our employees don't just survive, but thrive. Now, let's say you're an executive leader. You might be thinking, sounds good, but where's the proof? Well, the numbers don't lie. A study from Diversity for Social Impact found that companies with robust well-being initiatives saw productivity increase by an additional 1%. That's right. Happy employees, higher productivity. Who knew? You see, prioritizing well-being isn't just about being nice to our employees, it's a strategic move that delivers tangible business outcomes. We're talking about increased productivity, better engagement, and improved retention rates. And if that isn't impressive enough, these trends aren't confined to one corner of the globe. Businesses in the USA, UK, Australia, Canada, Europe, Singapore, Japan, Hong Kong, and other G7 countries are all on board the well-being train. It's clear as day. Investing in well-being works wonders, and not just for the employees. And the best part? It begins at the top, as leaders give a unique opportunity to set the tone, create the policies, and implement practices that promote well-being. In doing so, we aren't just creating better workplaces, we're also building a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive business landscape. I know it sounds like a big responsibility, but remember, with great power comes great well-being potential. So let's put on our leadership cap and lead by example. Let's invest in well-being, prioritize it, and most importantly, live it. Because a thriving workforce leads to a thriving business. So as we wrap up, here's a thought. Imagine a world where every day feels like bring your pet to work day, not because there are dogs and cats running around, but because we all feel just as happy, comfortable, and engaged. That's the power of prioritizing well-being in the workplace. Well, there you have it. That's the world of employee well-being in a nutshell, or should we say, in an office cubicle. Until next time, remember, healthy employees, happy business. So let's make well-being work for us. After all, we're in this together, one workday at a time.